Hey, welcome back, everybody. Happy Thursday to everyone uh, that is uh, nice enough to join me this morning or afternoon or really even evening, depending on when you're watching this. Uh, and uh, yeah, we've got a little bit to talk about in today's video here in the weather department. That big pattern change we've been talking about is now finally knocking on the doorstep, and some of you are already feeling the effects of that. So, uh, you know, if you're watching up in the Ohio River Valley, especially the Midwest, probably walking outside this morning feeling that crisp, cool air compared to uh, especially what we have have been feeling. So uh, definitely a nice little break from the craziness while others of us still have some severe weather to get through today uh, and some storminess, you know, within the next couple of days. And I'll talk about all of that uh, in today's video. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Uh, we're trying to get to 10,000 here by the end of hurricane season. Also like the video that does a ton in helping uh, the video reach more people. And uh, obviously like normal comment, let me know uh, where you're watching from. Also let me know if you're excited for the new Twisters movie. A couple people I know have already seen seen the early premiere, but um, it gets released to everybody tomorrow. So again, uh, if that's uh, something you're excited to watch, definitely let me know in the comments. Personally, uh, I'm very excited myself to see it. So um, I think with all that said, we can go ahead and jump on into the video. Um, I actually do quickly want to mention, or not mention, but just say thank you to everyone uh, new that has joined the channel within the past uh, week or so. We've had a pretty big uh, growth in subscribers, especially considering how slow it's been. Uh, we've gained about 100 or so. Uh, so again, really grateful to all of you uh, who have been uh, nice enough to hit that subscribe button. It really does mean a lot to me. Alrighty, now with all that said, let's go ahead and start talking about the weather here. So uh, again, it's all about this boundary we've been talking about. It's not hard to find. Uh, this is kind of the leading edge of it here uh, with uh, that nicer, cooler, drier air to the north of it and then that uh, muggier, stormier air off to the south and to the east of it. Uh, and it's going to continue to slowly ooze off towards the south and east today before probably, uh, I'd say tomorrow, Friday, getting about as far south and east as it will get. Uh, and we'll show you that map here in just a moment as well. But again, on that stormy side of things, we are definitely seeing some areas of convection firing up. Uh, one down into Texas, another off the coast of uh, the Carolinas and the Mid-Atlantic. We'll need to watch that for uh, the potential of uh, some pretty uh, nice storms just offshore. But really this afternoon... Um, is when things get a little bit more active along the boundary itself. Likely going to see some storms fire in this region, uh, again, some of which could become strong to severe and also cannot rule an isolated tornado or two, and I'll show you where here. I think that could be in uh, just a moment. But uh, uh, either way, that's what we're seeing right now on satellite radar imagery. Pretty similar story. Again, uh, most of the showers and storms currently offshore this morning, as we often see during the summertime. Uh, but by the time we get into this afternoon, again, radar really going to fill in specific into this area right here. I've got circled on your map uh, as that boundary continues to ooze south and east. Uh, and again, really a pretty feisty line of storms down into Texas this morning as well, which I mentioned. So uh, again, if you're uh, down that way, definitely let me know uh, what you're seeing out there uh, in the skies. All right, watches, warnings, advisories, and uh, all the fixings here. Um, uh, pretty quiet map, all things considered, uh, compared to what we've been dealing with the past couple of days. Uh, really not much to talk about except for some flooding potential this afternoon here uh, into eastern North Carolina. And I just realized I completely forgot to pull up uh, the rainfall map, so we'll have to do that on the fly here in just a moment. But um, either way, again, watching out for that flooding risk here for sections of eastern North Carolina, Greenville, New Bern, Elizabeth City, uh, the Cape Hatteras region, Virginia Beach. Beach even, Norfolk, uh, you know, King, uh, Kinston, uh, and kind of, uh, you know, surrounding areas here of North Carolina. It could see some excessive rainfall that could lead to some flooding uh, this afternoon and evening. Other than that, uh, again, pretty quiet through much of the eastern half of the country out west. Uh, again, some ongoing fire concerns, which uh, we will definitely need to watch out for. Also, it has been very hot out that way too, so uh, staying hydrated, also something we uh, are going to need to do. All right, um, severe weather today. Again, we do have a level two out of five risk for portions of eastern North Carolina and extreme southeastern Virginia from Virginia Beach, again, down through New Bern, uh, even the Raleigh area under this threat, uh, Elizabeth City, uh, Rocky Mount, North Carolina, uh, a lot of these kind of communities under that level two out of five, but even others in the level one out of five, including some big areas like Charlotte, Myrtle Beach, uh, Asheville, uh, Boone, Danville, Virginia, even up towards the Richmond area could see some feisty storms this afternoon and evening uh, that we will need to watch out for. So again, could uh, could reach a, a severe criteria. 
All right, so this pattern change, again, I told you it was coming. I didn't lie to you. And those of you up into uh, Minnesota, Michigan, Wisconsin, even Indiana, the Chicago area, Iowa, and even getting down through Ohio as we speak, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. Look at this dew point line uh, kind of just crash southward throughout this loop uh, before we get to the point we are now. Uh, and you'll notice, again, a lot of us in that very comfortable air. Anything under 60 is um, just about as comfortable as you're going to get here uh, for mid-July standards, really kind of the heart of summer here. Uh, well, at least the heart of summer in my mind. And for me, whenever uh, when school starts in August, it's fall. But um, uh, either way, climatologically speaking, uh, very nice temperatures. Uh, and again, more importantly, the dew point here uh, is uh, what's really making it feel nice out there. And again, if you're here into Kentucky, uh, the Ozarks, and you're up into the Northeast saying, well, you know, when am I going to feel the change? It's coming probably by this afternoon, evening, especially tomorrow. Uh, if you're south of there through Virginia, the Carolinas, and the Deep South, unfortunately, uh, that relief probably not going to quite make it all the way to you, but what we will be missing out in terms of drier, cooler, nicer air will make up for with some rainfall, uh, which should help to make it feel a little bit nicer out there for a lot of folks. So, again, just about everyone's at least getting some sort of uh, good news out of this, which is uh, obviously some um, something that we will take. All right, let me run you through a future radar for the next day or two and uh, talk about that severe weather threat this afternoon, including, again, what I think is an isolated tornado threat. The Storm Prediction Center doesn't have any area specifically outlined, but uh, I'm going to use my own Carolina forecasting techniques here to show you somewhere that I think, um, not obviously a big tornado threat by any means, but could see a brief uh, spin up in a couple places. So uh, let's go ahead and get into that. Uh, so moving this in this afternoon, about 3, 4 o'clock here, you'll notice, again, radar coverage filling in uh, widespread showers and storminess all the way from the Gulf Coast up through Virginia as that front tries to sneak on through here. Uh, and uh, again, it really picks up by this evening. So uh, I think once we get to about 6, 7 o'clock tonight, that's probably going to be the peak of intensity for many of these storms, especially these storms, again, kind of from, uh, you know, North Carolina, Southeast Virginia, and even the northern half of South Carolina. Uh, as for a bit of a tornado threat, I'm watching right into here, into sections of eastern North Carolina, even clipping the PD of South Carolina, kind of Myrtle Beach, Florence, northbound. Um, again, not a very high threat, but I am watching a little bit of a boundary that could try to set up shop. And oftentimes uh, in the Carolinas, when we get these boundaries, uh, adds a little bit of extra spin uh, on top of already low cloud heights and uh, plenty of instability this afternoon. Could see a brief uh, noodle or two, as we like to say. Uh, again, just one of those setups you don't want to write off. Uh, oftentimes these things like to overperform. So uh, I'm not saying it will today, but just know it has the chance to. So. I just kind of watch out for that. But uh, either way, main threat today will be strong straight line winds. So watching uh, all these storms here on radar, again, could produce strong straight line winds. Maybe even a little bit of hail we'll watch for as well, uh, depending on how high up some of these storms can grow. Uh, but again, just continues this evening. This is as the sun is set about 9 o'clock tonight. Uh, again, widespread storminess for many folks. That continues into the overnight hours, pushing out to sea. Uh, and could even stay a bit showery overnight uh, before calming down probably by the morning. But then we get to our Friday afternoon and we'll do it all again. More widespread showers and storms even from, again, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, through the Carolinas here. Uh, Going to pick up some pretty good rainfall totals probably uh, as uh, all this rain starts to work on through. So we'll need to watch out for that throughout Friday afternoon, Friday evening here. Again, widespread rain. Uh, and then this gets us into the early morning hours of Saturday. Uh, again, still some showers and storms hanging on around. All right, I'm going to quickly pull up some rainfall outlooks here. So if you will, bear with me here. Uh, in fact, we'll go ahead and kind of talk about this right now. So today, uh, excessive rainfall outlook. Uh, we do have some areas uh, to watch out for. Again, especially in eastern North Carolina where we had that flash flood watch. But anyone from southeast Virginia down through Texas could see excessive rainfall today. So just be aware of that. Know, uh, you know, have a way to get those watches and warnings, especially if you live in a flood prone area. Obviously, definitely always have a way to get those watches watches and warnings uh, today, but even tomorrow as well. Uh, unfortunately, the map isn't loading here, but uh, we uh, I'll just go ahead and draw it for you. Uh, again, kind of same general area, so through the southeast tomorrow. If you're anywhere in here, have a way to get watches and warnings. Flash flooding could be a potential. Uh, and then also on Saturday as well, if I can click the right button, that is. Here we go. Uh, Saturday as well. Um, again, could see some excessive rainfall into the southeast. So, again, just be aware of that. Uh, also, why I'm here, I'll show you uh, no chance of any overall winter storm impacts over the next three days. So, uh, we can go ahead and uh, kind of breeze right on through that part of the video, too. 
So, awesome. All right, um, that was a joke, by the way, obviously, if you didn't pick up on that. Uh, anyway, though, um, uh, taking a look at this pattern change that we've been talking about, obviously, it's already setting in stone, uh, but uh, how long is it going to last? Is this going to be something that we can look forward to kind of staying for the long haul, or is this just going to be a couple of days of uh, some nicer weather? Well, uh, the overall pattern looks like this. So, again, a piece of that trough gets broken off and kind of hangs out into the uh, southern tier of the country. Uh, through this weekend, we've been talking about that. Uh, latest model guidance so kind of keeps it there for a while, and by the time we're getting into early next week, watch the, this general pattern that sets up. Again, we've kind of got troughing here, but we've also got some ridging trying to set up shop back out into uh, portions of uh, the southeast coastline, that southeast ridge as you often hear. So what I'm thinking next week's going to probably look like here, should this pattern hold, which I feel pretty confident it probably will, is we're going to have flow something like this, which could uh, result in a little bit of a conveyor belt of moisture and energy. So I'd be watching for some flooding threats, uh, again with more afternoon thunderstorms next week, kind of in this circled area here, uh, with cooler temperatures in the blue part of your map here. But again, that green area that's circled uh, will definitely need to watch for some increased thunderstorm chances during the afternoon. Uh, so probably a little more typical of a summertime pattern than what we've probably seen the past couple of weeks where it's been pretty dry for a lot of folks. Uh, probably more typical July, uh, again, afternoon storminess with this. And that'll probably hang around that general pattern through much of next week, maybe all of next week. Uh, and then after that, we'll obviously see what happens. But uh, again, uh, Climate Prediction Center here agrees with the temperature outlook. Probably, you know, near average to below average through the south central part of the country while we're still hot out west uh, and probably a little bit more mild up uh, into the northeast and Florida as well. And even probably coastal and eastern sections of the Carolinas as that ridge will probably try to nudge inland a little bit. But again, some of us still going to be dealing with that nicer uh, temperature map here in the 6 to 10 day range. And again, like I talked about precipitation wise, uh, probably going to get a little bit of a squeeze play here. So watching for this corridor of increased rain chances. Um, kind of in between these orange lines on your map through uh, next weekend. So again, going to have to watch out for that uh, with the overall pattern. All right, temperatures. Uh, again, anyone that sees rain, obviously going to be slightly below average. Also, this weekend uh, with that cooler, nicer air into the Midwest, also going to bring temperatures slightly below average. This is this afternoon. Much of the eastern half of the country, uh, at least slightly below what we should be this time of year. And that will hang on. Uh, this is Friday afternoon, more of the same. Saturday afternoon, more of the same. Sunday afternoon and into Monday afternoon. Uh, you'll notice the pattern changing a little bit here as these cooler temperatures really shift off west a little bit towards the central part of the country uh, and getting into early next week. Excuse me. Um, you know, some of those warmer temperatures try to work back in, especially into the northeast and probably coastal sections of the southeast. Uh, but overall, still slightly below average at least uh, as some of that storminess continues during the afternoon hours. And you can see that pretty well on this map here. Uh, we'll start this Sunday afternoon. Again, you'll notice widespread thunderstorms once again in the afternoon through the southeast and the south central plains. Uh, but as we get later on into next week, Tuesday afternoon, uh, that storminess tries to work again northbound as uh, that, um, you know, nicer air kind of retreats and those dew points flood northward again. Uh, and again, just waves of rain kind of in this corridor that I mentioned. Uh, you know, like I like I talked about, kind of getting the squeeze play in between these two features. Uh, so again, storminess again next week for a lot of folks going to help to try to tamper down some of those temperatures. Uh, again, that theme just kind of continues here for the long haul. All right, um, I think that's that's all I had pulled up. There might have been something I forgot to um, show. Uh, I guess we can quickly show the dew point map uh, just because I probably should have and I didn't, so we'll pull that up on the fly here. Um, all right, here we go. We'll, we'll do this. Again, kind of seeing the behind the scenes stuff here, but uh, that is okay. So again, nicer dew points, and I did want to show this for Friday especially. Again, tomorrow afternoon, notice again these uh, nicer dew points finally catching up to the I-95 corridor and much of the Ohio River Valley, although still muggy into the southeast. Um, but again, getting into this weekend, slowly things are unfortunately going to go back downhill again. A Saturday afternoon, starting to become a little bit more muggy again for everybody, uh, but especially by Sunday afternoon and uh, definitely getting into early next week. Next Tuesday, you'll notice uh, dew points are all back in full force with that muggy air. So uh, watching out for that. If anyone holds on to the nicer air a little bit longer, probably interior sections of the Northeast, I would say, could get a couple extra days of uh, the drier air. But again, it'll even catch up to you eventually. So... Uh, watching out for that. 
Alrighty, well, I appreciate y'all watching. Again, it means a lot. Uh, obviously, if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Like the video and uh, comment. Let me know, uh, again, about that Twisters movie, if you're excited to see it, or if you plan on seeing it, or if you just don't care at all. Uh, with all that said, though, have a great rest of your Thursday, and I'll see you all tomorrow.